Hi and welcome to our official side event for Africa Europe Week. Coincidentally, this is also the European Youth Year. So good, good start to, to the year altogether. Now today's session that you have joined us for is live um, and it is on road safety and youth in Africa. Now we are taking you into hopefully an exciting, invigorating, inspiring, and in-depth look um, at a personal approach to this idea of road safety, um, the situation that's happening in Africa, specifically how it pertains to young people. As we wait for our fellow audience members, participants, and attendees to join us on this very important um, forum and focus, I want to remind you that this is live, that we are trying to connect people from all over the world, including me here in my home in London. We have various other speakers from Europe and all over the African continent. So please bear with us as we deal with the technical issues that the situation presents itself. But it's not going to stop us because we have a lot to get through. Now, later this week, leaders from the European Union and the African Union and other member states will meet for the sixth European Union African Union Summit in Brussels on the 17th and 18th of February. This event that you are participating, and I will need your participation, uh, is designed to discuss the challenges that young people are facing on the African roads, but more importantly, we'll also discuss possible solutions and recommendations. This will be presented to our decision makers. So whatever we do in this session, when I ask you to contribute, when our speakers speak, it all matters and it will all be taken on board. Okay, let us focus our minds. Road traffic injuries are the leading killer of young people. Africa is hit the hardest worldwide. And we all agree, there's no one that disagrees that this is critical and crucial and meaningful engagement of all the stakeholders, including and especially young people, is necessary if we're going to try and figure out how to stop this happening. Together, in the next hour and a half, we will explore how we can do this in an impactful way. But before we proceed, I'd like to thank our partners and sponsors that co-organize this event, the European Union, African Union, yours and the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety and its partners. We are grateful to you. Thank you. I would like to invite you, yes, you watching right now, our participants in this forum, have your keyboards at the ready because during this discussion, we will be asking you a series of questions, taking your input and your uh, questions and comments to the decision makers. We'll also have a poll coming up as well, just to get a sense of where we all are collectively. My name is Nila Farah Hidayat. I will be your MC for today's event. I am an Afghan born British journalist and I'm the correspondent for the Doha debates. I will be very, very engaged in the lovely discussion we're about to have. Now, we are thrilled to start uh, our session with a, a group of speakers. We are absolutely delighted to have live with us today the EU Commissioner for Transport, Her Excellency Adina Bilian. Welcome, Commissioner. May I ask you uh, for your welcoming words to our audience as you kick us off? Yes, hello. Hello, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege to address you today alongside uh, my colleague, Jutta Jokpilainen. Many thanks to yours for uh, working so closely with us to make this event happen. Today, young people are more likely to die in accidents on road than in any other way, and this is wholly unacceptable. As you might know, uh, this year is the European Year of Youth. This makes it more important than ever to give younger voices a key role in reversing uh, this trend, especially in Africa, the world's youngest continent in terms of population age. Transport connection should be synonymous with prosperity, trade and exchange, both commercial and cultural, safety, safe mobility for all users and especially vulnerable road users should be on our top priority when developing transport infrastructure and services. The good news is that uh, 
road safety is attracting greater political attention globally, partly because of efforts such as yours. The UN General uh, Assembly resolution on road safety has set the target of reducing road deaths and serious injuries worldwide by 50% by 2030. I look forward to seeing leaders endorse these figures uh, at the UN leaders meeting in July. This is already our target in the EU, but we treat this target as a stepping stone on the way to the ultimate goal of no deaths and serious injuries on our roads by 2050. We are working hard to implement on uh, uh, our road safety policy framework based on a safe system approach. This means we approach road safety from every angle, meaning safer vehicles, safer roads, safer driving, and better post-crash care. We also support local initiatives uh, that help guide um, young people to act uh, safely on the roads. For instance, winners of the Excellence uh, in Road Safety Awards this year included a Spanish project helping young people resist peer pressure to drink and drive, and an insurance company that uh, teamed up with a popular singer to warn against using a phone while cycling or driving. Perhaps similar partnerships could help promote safety education uh, in your communities also. I'm counting on the younger voices to help us get this right. You should be safe on your way to school, university, work, or um, an evening with friends. So I want you to be part of the conversation. And we will take your recommendations seriously. We'll respond to them as we did for the 13 uh, recommendations that came out of an EU Africa task force on road safety in 2020. We implemented them together with the African Union Commission and stakeholders. To give you a few concrete examples, we are supporting a project in Zambia, creating safe pavements, bike lanes and uh, pedestrian crossings. In Kenya, EU funds um, supports uh, initiatives to increase awareness of road safety and to improve uh, training and testing for drivers. So a lot to be done, a lot to listen about, a lot to implement, but let's continue working together and sharing ideas. The goal is to save lives and there is nothing more motivating than that. Thank you very much. Adina Belan, thank you so much for your contribution and for, for, for highlighting to us one specific point that this cannot be done without collaboration from all different stakeholders. Thank you so much those comments. Now it is time to hear from the African region. We are honored to have His Excellency, His Excellency Mr. Benazir Boulajou with us today. He's the head of the Moroccan Road Safety Agency and the president of the African Road Safety Observatory. Unfortunately, due to technical issues, we won't be able to see uh, Mr. Benazir, but we will be able to hear his vital message. You have the floor. Thank you very much uh, for this initiative and thank you for your invitation. It's my pleasure today to be with you and I will give uh, some words about this issue, which is very, very important in our continent. Road traffic injuries are a major development problem in Africa. The WHO reports, group report note that more than half of those killed on the roads are young adults between the age of 15 and 45, and 44. And they are often bedwinners. In addition to roads insecurity, the cost of the social and economical cost of traffic injuries is between 3% and 5% of national product. The estimated amount of those costs is greater than the total development assistance received by these countries. Unfortunately, the African region has the highest estimated road of road traffic fatalities at 26.6 per 100,000 population compared to 17.4 globally. However, the region is the least motorized with 46.6 vehicles per 100,000 1, people. Half of road traffic fatalities occur among vulnerable road users, while the region has the highest proportion of pedestrian fatalities, especially among the population. Consequently, Africa is currently facing a real road safety crisis that continues to worsen 
at brick-taking pace. Even if there are solutions to stem this crisis, it remains essential to promote the political will to act and the institutional capacities to respond to it, particularly of your generation. It is therefore important for the international community to recognize that road safety is also a sustainable development objective for the coming years, which countries must take up on their own in order to provide an effective response. Improving road safety conditions in Africa are used mainly if the focus is on young people who are considered to be strategic levers and devices. They must be involved in plans and strategy, strategies since they can advocate for this cause. Being very active in communication and awareness raising actions and road education activities and also at the level of actions in faculties and universities. They can enormously contribute in scientific research and development projects, as well as the networking and digitalization agendas. Political commitment at global, at global, continental, regional and national levels, as well as financial mobilization from multilateral agencies, donor countries, is essential for an effective response to such a target namely youth population. The African continent has experienced several varied forms of road safety collaboration. One of the main objectives of this collaboration is to improve road safety for vulnerable road users to contribute to the quality of life of the youth inhabitant in the, of the continent. Awareness campaign, research and development, as well as knowledge transfer, transfer also belong to this area. This framework, which focuses on youth, is expected to serve as a political background for enhancing road safety in Africa by simulating road safety strategies at the national level, enabling to the development of national, regional, and continental road safety programs, and further contributing to road safety and promoting the harmonization of road safety strategies and planned population at which the young generation will be the most winner. Thank you very much. His Excellency, Mr. Benazir, pointing out critically the, the impact of what we're trying to do here. And sometimes as we delve into the minutiae and the detail, his message might be lost. What we're talking about isn't just changing one aspect of a young person's lives. It's about saving it. This is far more than just infrastructure or making sure things are done in, in an orderly or right way or adding safety to the lives of one person. It's about adding safety to, to a community, to a region. And that's the power of what we're talking about here today. It's why this is my second year joining you guys um, as we take this issue on. So thank you so much, Your Excellency, for those words. Now we will uh, hear from our next speaker, the EU Commissioner for International Partnership, Her Excellency uh, Jutta Urpilainen. Unfortunately, she was not able to join us live, but she has sent us this video statement. And I want you to pay special attention to Her Excellency's commitment to listening to young people. Check this out. Dear Adina, dear friends, road accidents, are the leading cause of death among young people. The figures are heartbreaking. Fatalities in Africa are five times higher than here in Europe. So what can we do to stop this? First, under our EU-Africa partnership for digital transformation, road transport will become smarter and safer. Smart connected vehicles with warning information and emergency systems will reduce road accidents and fatalities. We also support the African Transport Policy Support Programme and the UN Road Safety Trust Fund. Second, regional corridors in Sub-Saharan Africa have high levels of traffic volume and speed. Under the EU Global Gateway, we will invest in these strategic trade corridors. Better infrastructure means less road accidents in the long term. 
And third, youth, a top priority of my mandate. I have set up a global youth sounding board. It advises me and my DG on improving youth participation and empowerment in our policies and programs, including on road safety. Two of its members are activists on road safety and take part in the Youth Coalition for Road Safety. The board is reaching out on road safety to young people and youth organizations. This is part of a consultation for our first youth action plan in EU external action. Colleagues, road accidents are devastating for families of victims, communities and society at large. They don't have to be. So together, let's keep roads safe. Let's guarantee our youth's future. Commitments are exactly what we need. And that is exactly what Her Excellency uh, Opilainen has done for us there. I'm jazzed by what she has to say and everything um, that, that, that the EU is doing in order to try and make sure um, that the objectives that we are trying to reach are within reach. Now, to prepare us for our next session, we're going to watch an artistic video. I love this, you're gonna love this, called Claiming It. It is the official anthem of the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety. The song has been produced by the youth art movement, Uganda. I am more than just a statistic. You see, thanks to my existence, the society can now be optimistic about the future. But with all these road crashes, how do you expect me to get to my future? Huh? My father used to say, work hard and make your life an easy one. But the road to my destiny is not an easy one. They say that life is what you make it. But how will I make it when decision makers won't let me be a participant? I can see what is happening to Mother Nature. Climate change is all around me. I don't need a lecture. No, I don't want to sit back. I want to take charge. All I need is opportunity. It doesn't take much. Articulate the facts, work with us more We can surely reduce the debt
I just got back into my seat after dancing to that fantastic uh, presentation. Very, very excited to have the Youth Art Movement Uganda in our session. I hope it's got you excited. We are now entering the heart of today's event. Our speakers so far have outlined the consequences of inaction and the power that we as a collective have in action. To help us understand road traffic injuries, where they happen and why they happen, is pivotal to motivating us and understanding the risks involved. And so I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Etienne Krug, Director of the World Health Organization and a huge supporter of youth leadership in road safety. Before I ask Dr. Krug to comment, um, to make his presentation, I would ask, I'd like to ask for those of you watching right now to make sure your voices are heard as well. Type in your comments, your questions, any reflection that you have in the comment section of wherever you are streaming this live um, uh, forum, and we will get to your questions at the end of this presentation and the keynote speech by Dr. Krug. Over to you. Thanks so much, Nedufar, and uh, a big thanks also to our colleagues in the European Union, in the African Union, and in yours for setting up this very important event and great opportunity to discuss road safety and how it affects young people and what young people can do about it. Uh, we've heard it already. I mean, we are paying an unacceptably high price for our mobility. Just for the chance to take our car and go to work or to school or on holidays, we are seeing people die on a very daily basis. We've heard it, 1.3 million people die every year, more than 50 million get injured. In fact, since the invention of the automobile, 50 million people have died on the world's roads. Yeah, 50 million people, that is more than World War I or the so-called Spanish flu, one of the deadliest epidemics of all time. And we are living with that and we are accepting that price for our mobility. Not only do we accept it, we also accept the fact that it is young people who pay the highest price. It is young fathers, young mothers, students, adolescents who go to the daily business and get killed by the hundreds every day. These are breadwinners, therefore families end up into poverty. These are young people full of life, full of energy at the beginning of their life who just don't get an opportunity to live. This is why we need to talk about this issue and we need to take action. And I'm really happy we have this discussion today between EU and AU because Africa is particularly affected. What we've seen is that countries as they develop usually see a rise in road traffic deaths and injuries and it rises and it rises more and people feel, yeah, okay, if we're going to develop, that's the price to pay. Until one day, a brave politician wakes up and says, no, we do not have to accept this. We can put in place good laws, good information, good data collection, and measures that make our streets and our vehicles safer. And if we do that, road traffic deaths will start declining. And we can develop, we can see our economies develop and have more cars on the streets and more streets and more drivers and all of that without having more deaths, provided we take the right action. What we need is to see that action happen all over the world. The EU has seen a decrease in road deaths, we've heard it. Africa is still seeing largely an increase and we need to see uh, brave political decisions uh, taken so that we see these deaths stop. Particularly because it is those who are using the most healthy modes of transport, walking and cycling, who are the most affected. In fact, Africa has three times more deaths than some other parts of the world on the road. But among those deaths, we see also a larger proportion of pedestrians and cyclists. And that's what we have to change because we have to make sure that the healthy modes of transport are the most protected so that we can promote them, not only tackling thereby road safety, but also non-communicable diseases, heart attacks, strokes, et cetera, cancer, 
as well as improving uh, the environment and, and the air we breathe. So, so, so it's a win-win, provided we make the right investments. And we are at a crucial time. The UN General Assembly has declared a decade of action, which started last year, with a very precise target, 50% reduction target in road deaths. This will not happen without young people taking things in their hands. Young people are the ones who are going to set the change because you are the ones setting the new modes of transport. You can promote cycling and walking and, and, and demand that it be made safer. You are using much more public transport than my generation. So you can uh, take the, the, the actions needed. You will be helping drive it, but you have to demand it. So be vocal, be there, be there to help us in a way to help you, uh, demanding that heads of state take the right decisions. And they can do that by joining the high level meeting that the UN General Assembly will have uh, end of June, early July this year. The president of the General Assembly will call on all heads of state to join him in New York to discuss how they can take things in their hands. So please help us mobilize also heads of state to join us in New York for that important meeting but more importantly, even to take action in all of their countries. Thanks so much for doing what you're doing. I know young people could spend their time having parties, doing other things, but those who are taking road safety in their hands uh, get all my admiration because you can really make a difference. Thanks so much. Etienne Krug, thank you. We're not done with you quite yet. That, that's that's a, that's. Lots of important points that you've made, but now a direct question, if I may. After all, I am a journalist. I can't help myself. Doctor, we've got a question coming in from Apia Ruth Makuha, who says, how can we help the youth in Africa to overcome accidents on our roads? For example, in busy Uganda, where I had the fortune of being in 2016 and have seen for myself the risks young people take just crossing the road to go to school. Apio continues, we have so many challenges, especially where trucks, small vehicles and motorcycles, plus cyclists and pedestrians have to use the same road. What advice can you offer, Doctor, to, to, to help uh, Apio in, in their activism? Well, that's a great question and thanks so much for asking it. I, I, it reminds me a few years ago when I was a doctor in Africa, in Mozambique, in a hospital during the war, uh, and I had more victims of road traffic crashes coming in than those injured by by uh, the war. So, so I, I very well know how important it is. And it's not easy, of course, but action can be taken at all levels. It can be done at the most local level, around your school, uh, at an important crossing point, just demanding that school authorities make sure there is a sidewalk uh, there is a bicycle path, there is a way to access the school safely. Uh, you can demand from school authorities, from local authorities, from the mayor in the village to take action so that speed bumps are installed. Speed bumps are among the cheapest and most cost-effective interventions there are in public health. So, so there are some small things, uh, a speed limit, for example. Again, that's very cheap to say, okay, in this area, a maximum of 30 kilometer per hour will be allowed because there is a school, there is a hospital, or it is the center of town and people are walking and cycling here as, as well as driving. So, so you can act at the most local level and, and by mobilizing other young people and as a group demand action. And then you can you know, organize yourselves just as yours has done at the global level to have a national uh, group of young people that, you know, as a group, you become stronger, of course, that will lobby national authorities for more action. So there's a lot you can do. And we at the World Health Organization really want to be there to support you because we believe in it. Glad to hear it, Dr. Krug. Thank you so much uh, for answering one of our audience questions. And, and for those of you who are tuning in and watching and streaming this live, like Jean Aristide, I believe, saying awesome anthem from Uganda, thumbs up. I agree, but I'm biased. I've heard it before. I really love it. We've got comments uh, in from other folks. Uh, Frida is joining us, says hello. And uh, Frida is joining us from Namibia. You are very welcome here. Ayub, Madua uh, and Fiona have all sent in comments and questions that hopefully we will get to as we continue the show. But as the MC, I must unfortunately move us along because we are at our first 
session. Now, this session, we are focusing on intergenerational dialogue about the challenges on the African roads from a youth perspective. Now, the session is going to be all about the challenges that young people face specifically on the African roads and the opportunity to oversee them by addressing the Agenda 2030. Before we go on, though, I want all of you who are sending in your comments to perhaps help me a little bit. I was in Kenya last month for 10 days um, and in Nairobi, and I saw for myself just how difficult it is and how much you have to mentally and emotionally prepare yourself to simply cross a road. I live a very privileged life here in London where as a pedestrian, I am protected in a multitude of ways. So having that experience on, in both Europe and in Africa and knowing exactly what we're trying to do here, I wanna tap in to the experiences, the passion and the stories that our young people have to really truly connect and not only connect mentally and uh, in terms of policy, but connect emotionally, which I believe is something all of our speakers have been saying. So to that effect, my dear audience, a poll, if you will, before we go ahead, I would like you um, to answer this question in the poll that we have started. The question is, have you noticed any improvement in road safety in your country in the past decade? Have you noticed any improvement in road safety in your country in the past decade? You have three chances, three options in your reply. Yes, you have. No, you haven't. Or partially. We will get to the results of this poll later in our session. Now, the overview that Dr. Krug gave us is shocking. More people from road traffic accidents than a war. It's, it's hard to imagine. But we all have to live with this. Perhaps the fact that we do live with this knowledge is the shocking part. Now let's listen to a personal account of an amazing youth leader talking about the road safety situation in Nigeria. Welcome, Simon Patrick Obi. Simon, you are the Youth Leadership Board Member of the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety, and you're up next. Thank you so very much, Nilofia, uh, for you know conducting this conversation so far. Um, it is important to begin this conversation to mention that uh, over 80% of economic activities in Nigeria and by extension Africa rest on road transportation. It is also important to note that over 60% of the population in Africa are young people. These are the record we have. But one of the greatest challenge facing youth in Africa is that you, young people are continually killed in record number daily on the African road. And one of the shocking things is that the peers get to live with this tra traumatic experience of losing their colleagues, you know, and friends. And to further shock us, the worst of it all is that no one is speaking up for these young people. Neither does any of this make the, the news headline. This is my experience, my personal experience, walking across the length and breadth of Nigeria, advocating and promoting road safety in Nigeria. Let me share a personal experience. Just recently, in a state called Kogi State. There was a crash involving a fuel tanker. The fuel tanker killed students who were going to school in India in India in India in bus. You know, and these are daily occurrence in Nigeria, and nobody raised, you know, awareness about this issue. Let me also give you a, a typical example because this conversation will not go well if we do not share personal experience. In Syria alone recently, there was also a tanker crash in, you know, in Freetown, Syria alone, which killed over 98 people. Most of these people are young people. And these are the daily experiences that young people 
uh, faiths in Africa. You know, to make the matter worse, in terms of decision making table, we don't get to see young people. We know that youths are at the receiving end of this traffic disaster. But we also know that none of these young people, like I earlier mentioned, you know, sit at the decision making table for road safety. This even makes this problem worse. Simon, Simon, it's, it's so powerful to hear you speak, and not only on your behalf and the, uh, uh, with the capacity of the activism and the work that you do for Nigeria, but the story of Sierra Leone, that just feels shocking. And if I may, Simon, it feels to me that you're talking of the apathy, not only of the general public, but of the media and the accountability that needs to happen. Um, many people agree with you. Um, uh, uh, and please do submit all of your comments. Um, what did you think of what Simon had to share with us? Do you agree that there is an apathy both in the media and a lack of, of willingness by politicians to take this seria, to, to take this seriously? Simon Patrick Obi, thank you so much for your contribution. The Youth uh, Leadership Board Member at the Global Youth Coalition. Now, uh, I have one more question for you, Simon, but, but we've only got quite literally one minute. To, to see if you can answer it. And my question to you is, if you could change one thing, you, you've named a myriad of problems, but if you could change one thing about road safety in Africa or Nigeria, what would it be? I think it's simply that I would get more young people involved at the decision-making table. I would also engage more young people in the issues of road safety, because these are the people that are worst hit by the catastrophe of road traffic crashes. So the best way to solve this issue, it's simply by engaging these people. If we don't engage these people, all efforts are, you know, almost wasted. You, you. Have, you have so much support um, from, our, from our contributors, our participants who are watching. Uh, Goodyear Zambwe says, I agree with Simon, I'm from Nigeria, and these are daily occurrences, Ibrahim, as I agree with Simon, um, and there are more coming in, uh, Kristen, as well. So please do keep your comments coming in and make sure that you tap that poll button because as soon as I go to Omnia, our next speaker, thereafter, I will be sure to see what the results of that poll are. Now, Omnia, if I may, we are going from west to north, from Nigeria to Egypt, where you are joining us, uh, and Omnia uh, uh, Elumrani is from the EU Youth Sounding Board advising Commissioner, um, the EU Commissioner that we spoke to earlier. She will talk about road safety in connection with the Sustainable Development Goals. Omnia, in Northern Africa, we are listening. Yes, um, thank you so much for having me. I hope you can hear and see me well. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of road safety and sustainable development, uh, I would like to first highlight that when it comes to sustainable development, Health is central to this agenda. And why do I say this? Uh, in, in, in addition to my work with the EU Commission, I'm a young uh, resident, uh, plastic and reconstruction, and I work with trauma on a daily basis. Yesterday, we had a 16-year-old patient, a post road traffic accident. He had a pan facial fracture where he had to undergo a surgery that lasted for six hours because of the fractures that he had around the orbit, around the mandible, and so on. And this is not just the first patient that I see, it's the daily type of patients that I see because of road traffic accidents. It has become a social norm uh, here in Egypt and in the broader region of Africa. Um, and it has become for us something that we are used to. Um, and this brings me to highlight that road safety is not a transport related issue when it comes to an agenda within the sustainable development. It's a human health issue which brings the urgency to acting on road safety and prioritizing it uh, at the top of the sustainable development agenda, because this agenda is mainly for young people who are the ones most impacted by road safety. That's the first point. Uh, the second point is that as young people, we are going to live and see the world thrive and achieve the goals of the sustainable development agenda. And this cannot happen without us starting to have the top conversations around issues that are impacting our health most, which is road traffic accidents and injuries. 
And this brings me to highlighting why as young people, we need to be involved, as Simon mentioned, at the decision-making table. Uh, because now more than ever, we are going to be, and we are already impacted by the, by, by the road safety crisis. But at the same time, we are increasingly active and engagement, either through our local actions, raising awareness, advocating with our peers, with our governments and diverse stakeholders, both on a national level in our own countries and our own communities, but also on a global level when we are attending conferences, developing statements and so on. But I think the missing piece uh, or the missing puzzle is how we can do this in a sustainable way, how we can engage in a way that young people not being at the decision-making table is no longer an option. It's, it's always, whenever we are talking about planning of transport systems or roads, young people are part of the conversation, are part of the panel, are part of the committee that is developing the, the infrastructures that are aiming to protect and promote our health and the health of the future generations to come. So my last sentence or message is that road safety is a human health issue. It is as urgent as issues as COVID, as climate change and so on. And it has to be at the top of the sustainable development agenda for us to see the development and the thriving that the world needs. Omnia, what I'm hearing from you is something that, can you believe in the two years that I've been doing this seminar, not even I have thought of. This is a human issue. This is a human health issue, not just a young person issue. And I think once we think about it in that context, so many other doors um, appear on which we can knock and make our agenda and our voices heard. Omnia, thank you so much for contributing um, there. I really appreciate it. So we move on. Uh, and now that we've heard from the youth leaders and their emotional um, and, 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 and thoughtful contributions, I'd like to go on to our high level policymakers. Now, in a moment, we will head back to Europe to hear from Matthew Baldwin, the coordinator for road safety and sustainable mobility within the European Commission. But before we go there, let's uh, look at the poll results that we had earlier. If the producers could put that up, we asked you, have you noticed an improvement in road safety in your country in the past decade? And you had three options, yes, no, and partially. I can tell you that uh, 17 of you, 30% said yes, you have. 26 or nearly 27% said no, absolutely not. But a, a good number of you, majority, 42 to 43% said partially. So look, this is a better picture than I was expecting. We are making headway but are we making it soon enough? And what political stumbling blocks are there that we need to climb over in order to reach our goal? We wanna make sure that we have yes, many more times over than no or partially. So I, I, I bring that to you, Matthew Baldwin. Why do you think progress on road safety is so sluggish um, in some countries, but moving really fast in others? And and how does this disproportionately impact young people? Well, Neil Afar, it's great to be with you. And it's so inspiring to hear uh, the, the voices. And, and I'm sorry, I'm one of the old guys coming in after the brilliance of Simon and Omnia. Those guys rocked the UN uh, Stockholm meeting, and it's such an honor and privilege to come after them. I mean, very quickly, I think we've lost a lot of momentum on road safety in the COVID period, and we've lost it across the board. And this year, we've got to get back on the horse and really take it to the UN high-level meeting, which Etienne and his colleagues are arranging for June. And the youth have got to take it to that meeting. And listening to this, I have every confidence that they will. To answer your question directly, I think we have a lack of funding. There's an economic crisis which is affecting every government, but there's no excuse when we know just how much road safety is costing us. And frankly, yes, the politicians, the advisors, you've heard my bosses, the commissioners, taking such a strong and clear line on road safety, but every political leader has got to step up to the plate and deliver on this crucial question. If I can get technical for a moment, but you heard my commissioner use it, we need this safe system approach that we have in aviation. The kind of deaths we have on road are, would be utterly unacceptable if it happens on aviation, and I fail to understand why I accept them on our roads. Because, as you said, to answer your second question, they do disproportionately affect young people. The numbers are horrific overall. 1.3 million people dying every year. 
it's the biggest cause of death for young people aged 5 to 29. And unsurprisingly, when you look at the numbers, we have 2 billion people aged 10 to 24 years old in this world. We need to hear their voices. They are 40% of the global population and 90% of this population in the global south. So put all this together, and this is why road safety is such a pivotal subject for the EU-AU summit meeting this week here in Brussels. Now, I, I, before, I, before I move on, I want to stay with you a moment. You and I have spoken on this before. We've been here. We, 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 we know that um, this is an issue that affects young people, but it seems as though the, I want to say apathy, that perhaps the, the news media, public health organizations have towards addressing this issue is a real stumbling block. Uh, Dr. Krug mentioned that we need brave politicians, and, and you've mentioned this again, but how do we need to make sure that we in, that translates to actual policy that is enacted? So wh what can we fix between the policy makers and the enactment of these policies? That seems to be a question that many um, uh, of, of our participants are asking. It's a great point. I mean, we have to get at this acceptability point. We should stop talking about accidents as these things just happen and it's just life that goes with mobility. It needn't happen with mobility. And if you like, I think to analyze the problem, it's a global issue. We talk about it at the national level, but the implementation has to be on the ground. And that's why I'm so excited to see the comments in the in the questions in the chat from people saying we want action on the ground in Uganda. We want action wh wherever we are. It's a local issue. And why, if you think about who's dying in our towns and cities, vulnerable road users, 70 percent of the casualties are to the people who aren't protected by cars. So like the question you put earlier, we've got to think about bike lanes, uh, pedestrian footpaths. We've got to think of ways of protecting the most vulnerable people who are just, as Dr. Krug said, going about their daily business. And it's young people on the front line. And we've got to get young people involved to make those changes. Matthew Baldwin, thank you so much. We now go from uh, Matthew to Matthew's African counterpart. I'm delighted to welcome Robert Leisinghe. Robert, uh, you are the Chief of Energy Infrastructure and Service Section at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. I am grateful for your time today. Robert, if I may, why is road safety a major issue in the AU for youth? And what action can the AU take now to tackle this? I think you're muted there, Robert. I'd, I'd be delighted if you could, because I want to hear every word of this. If you, thank you so much. Yes, Please, thank you. On. And I was just saying that I'm delighted, so delighted to be with you uh, this afternoon uh, because of the team uh, of this event, uh, youth and, and Africa. I think Africa, because the rate of death on our continent is disproportionately high compared to other regions of the world. 26.6 people die out of 100,000 people every year on our road, uh, compared to just nine in, in, in Europe. And the young people are paying a heavy toll uh, because of this. The last share of those who die are between 15 and 29 years. So the team of this meeting is spot on. But I want to look at the challenges of road safety uh, from a youthful perspective in three dimensions. One, management. Uh, two, young people as victims. Three, young people as contributors also uh, to this problem. Uh, in terms of management, it only makes too much sense that if a large share of the people who die every day on our roads are young people, they should be on the table making uh, the decisions on road safety on the continent because they understand better why they are dying on our roads. Number two is about the victims. And you could look young people from a victim perspective across the dimensions of road safety. Take infrastructure. Uh, the safety of our infrastructure is not balanced across the different users of the road. You find that you don't necessarily have the facilities uh, for, for vulnerable road users like pedestrians and a large proportion of these people are young people. And, and that's why we're advocating at the UN that all roads should be at least three style roads for all road users, including uh, pedestrians. Number two, if you look at the vehicles, young people are mostly uh, occupants of, of vehicles. And we need to make sure that the vehicles that come on our continent 
and a lot of these are used by foot, should be fit for purpose. They should be seat belts. Uh, they should have all the facilities that should accidents happen. Uh, the young people who are occupants are not severely affected. Now, do young people contribute to road safety, uh, to road crash problem as well? I think so. And I think that that is why it's great that as, as advocates, you should also talk to your fellow young people. And this is in relation to the vulnerable, in the, the road user behavior. And what am I talking about? Talking about the regulations on use of mobile phone while driving, regulation on drinking and, 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 and driving, regulation of wearing seat belt, helmet when you are riding. And so you can advocate for other young people to please respect the rules and regulations that we do have. I, pre I Robert, I very much appreciate your contribution there. Thank you so much for, for making that clear from, from the African perspective. Um, we are now ready to move on to the second session, um, practical solutions, case studies. So these are real life case studies, youth leadership on road safety interventions. For those of you who are commenting online, Indrengo, uh, Cleofas, um, Evans, who are saying whether you're from Kenya or whether you're from sub-Saharan region, you agree with the idea that it is very painful to see these things, to see these incidences go by without the attention. There's the, there's the calamity of the event itself if there is a road traffic collision, but then the way that it is ignored um, seems to be as devastating. Um, so uh, just to, I think, uh, Somebody's mic is on, but I will I will continue anyway. So, so far, you guys have been voting in polls and asking questions from our high level policymakers. And, and I hope you feel an integral part of today's forum on young people and road safety, but there's loads more that you can contribute. So as we get into today's session, this next session, I want to hear from you. What what stories do you want to contribute to this discussion as we hear from the two incredible change makers that I've invited on um, about their experiences. What are your experiences? When have you tried to make a difference and have you been heard? Also, uh, for those of you who are tuning in, why don't you tell me what your name is and where you are watching from? I'd love to know who is there. Okay, kicking off our second session here, we have got two more youth leaders from the Youth Coalition, uh, Oliver Nalwada and Linda uh, Nakisa Masibu from Uganda and Kenya, respectively, join us. Now, these two fantastic human beings will give us a glimpse into what youth leadership looks like. They will share their experiences as members of um, and leaders, in fact, of the Youth Coalition and implementation of projects at the community level. So, Oliver, if I might come to you first. Hello, thank you for joining us. Tell us more about the, the this Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety. How many members do you have and, and how do you manage to affect local change as part of a global entity? Thank you so much. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Oliver Narada. Uh, Uganda. I'm a youth leadership board member with the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety. So the, about the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety, this is a collective of individual youth as well as uh, organizations for road safety and sustainable mobility across the globe. Uh, this movement was started in uh, February 2020, and uh, it was birthed uh, during the World Youth Assembly, where young people came together and uh, came up with a global youth statement for road safety, which is our guiding uh, advocacy document, and also initiated the coalition in a way to create a platform that brings together young people with similar interests. Uh, to date, we have a membership of uh, about 1,000 young people from uh, over 107 countries across Africa, Asia, Europe, and America. And uh, these are young people from uh, different fields. We have young people from road safety, young people from the field of health, young people from education, and those from climate change. And they are all coming together to address the public health rate of uh, traffic injuries and fatalities. Uh, if I may, I want to understand if I may, Oliver, I want to tap into that brilliance that you have 
that you you've just taught us about you wrote the document you made it easy for the politicians you made it easy for the public health officials you gave them the roadmap what was it like working collaboratively with other young people did you enjoy the experience is this something that our audience should be getting involved with yeah it was really amazing because uh, you would see that uh, young people are passionate uh, coming out in the process of developing this document you would see that young people have the lived experience uh, young people are passionate about road safety and they are so eager to be part of the, the decision making process they want to support in any way that they can that's why you see like you said it right that document lays it out uh, it lays out what the calls and responsibilities of young people are what do they expect of the different stakeholders and how they can partner to advocate jointly but also address this public threat issue of uh, traffic injuries and fatalities wonderful and uh, I'll, I'll come back to you in a moment if i may go over to linda linda you uh, you're the one of the winners of youth coalition's local action initiatives for 2021 i mean which means that you've done some impressive work what was the specific hurdle that you remember overcoming that really stands out for you because I'm sure our audience who are watching want to learn exactly what to expect. This is not easy work, but it's important. So what hurdle do you remember overcoming? I, I want to hear from you. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges we had was the pandemic uh, because our project is for students in Belgium and our target population is international students. So we had a decrease in on-campus enrollments compared to previous years because not as many people came to school in person this year. Uh, so outreach activities were a lot harder because we were online. But what happens when you finally do get the right number of people in a room? Um, how, 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 how challenging has it been to, to sort of implement these things? And what is your biggest advice for people who want to follow in your steps as local action leaders? Um, I think flexibility. Uh, a lot can change in the course of implementation and you need to be ready to understand what's happening and react uh, to address the issue, whatever whatever you may be dealing with. Oliver, if I might come back to you and then Linda will be back to you for that final comment. What is your message for um, this, this forum that you have? You have a willing audience. What is a, a message that you want to convey? I think uh, the message I want to convey to all the young people is that uh, find creative and innovative ways to pass on the message to your peers, but also to your stakeholders. Uh, when you look at uh, the members within the coalition at the moment, we are seeing creative things like campaigns. You've seen the amazing poems from Uganda on road safety. So the different young people, you have the power to change the world. You have the power to address the issue of uh, public uh, of uh, the public threat of road safety so you have to just be bold take action in creative ways and uh, be as loud as you can at the decision making table perfect linda if i might come to you you uh, are from kenya uh, where i've had the privilege of spending 10 days last month um which i was very pleased to do but you live in europe so I want to understand from you, what are the road safety challenges and, and how do we get young people to engage and have an impact collectively, right? Because the challenges faced in Europe are very different to the ones faced in, um, in Kenya or in other parts of, of Africa. But the movement for that, for that change needed is the same. So what similarities and differences have you noticed? Um, I do... Um serve as a regional leader for Europe within the coalition and some of the challenges we're having is we want to reach out to more young people, we want to involve more young people in this um, activities and Africa has been really successful in doing that. The Africa team is has a robust membership of a lot of people who are really working towards this and that's what we would like to emulate. Linda and Oliver, thank you so much for getting our energy levels back up and for passing on those messages. I Tip my hat to both of you. Thank you so much for your contribution. Now the audience has been listening intently. Margaret says, this is great. I hope all governments will take it seriously. They will. Sheila says, hi Nelifa. It is so frustrating that uh, we have so many low cost sustainable solutions to some of the road safety problems, but the institutions in place are not listening. There's a lot to talk. There's a lot of talk, but no action. 
I hear you. Caro Smith says, it's wonderful. Um, youth are involved now too. We would love to work with you. Don't forget us and our experiences, please. Us oldies, not my words, that's Caro's word, uh, in road safety have done this for many years and often do this full time because our children have been killed. Indrengo says, in addition to the setbacks presented by Matthew and Robert, there is a lack of technical safety professionals in Africa. Where there is a need, that need must always be met. So if, if, if there are young people listening, get into it, get into engineering, road engineering, safety and all that. My mum was in fact a civil engineer. So I, I, I take Indrengo's comment very seriously and passionately to heart. She would be proud to read that. And Amidu says, congratulations. Um, and that appeared when Oliver and Linda were talking. So um, well done to everybody for sending those comments and questions in. You have merely one more chance. So if you have any thoughts, any stories you'd like us to share, any, any points you want to make to the policymakers, we would love to hear it. Do send in your comments as we go on to the third session. And here we want to ask where and how to embed meaningful youth engagement in road safety policy making. So you heard from two change makers on the ground, but what does that mean when it comes to giving it to the policy makers to turn it into actionable decisions? Now that was a lot of incredible insight and information from our youth leaders. And a lot of you must be itching to get going as part of the youth coalition, but we're not quite done. Our last session is another exciting panel discussing and bringing together everything we have discussed into recommendations to take forward. We'll talk about the best practices for engaging youth leaders in the decision-making process and how we can integrate this into the road safety agenda. Now, that is a real mouthful and I'm not quite sure what I just said, but it will all become clear in a moment because our speakers, Maxwell Changombe, um, the program coordinator for Zimbabwe for Restless Development is here with us. Mohammed, I say, if, um, if Msma, Sorry, Mohammed, how do I say your name? That was really badly done. Yes, it's Mohammed Isa. <laughs> thank you so much. There's a typo in my script. Uh, Mohammed Isma, thank you. You are the liaison officer for public health issues and a familiar face. You know, number four, Matthew Baldwin, the deputy director general of the European Commission and coordinator for road safety and sustainable mobility, joins us along with Robert Lisinge of the United Nations. Economic Commission for Africa. Robert, to you straight away, I want to understand what will you start doing differently today based on what you have heard to work in this meaningful change? Um, I'm just waiting to see if Robert is on the line. He might have dropped off. Let me put this to you, Matthew. What, what have you heard today that you will want to put forward in a meaningful way um, in the upcoming conversations that we've had? So what have you, what is, what have you heard that will make you act differently? Well, firstly, you heard our commissioner. She said that we're listening and we will react. We will listen to the recommendations the youth comes forward and we will get back to you and respond and hopefully positively on many of them. And I'm delighted that Omnia, we've heard from earlier, is part of the First Youth Action Plan. She's therefore directly in the sounding board for the EU Africa Union Summit. That voice is going to be heard by hook or by crook. But apart from that, we have to think of all the different tools in the armory. We have to think about funding. We're proud to be putting a lot of money into road safety through our development instruments, through the UN Road Safety Fund, through Horizon Europe. I want to hear from you where best you want that money to go. If there's a shortfall of a shortfall of young professionals to work on road safety issues, that's something maybe we should look at to work on training programs to implement, for example, through our delegations. If you, if I may, to give some advice, think about alliance building, alliance building with other NGOs on the road safety field across national and international boundaries. Think about alliances with other NGOs in relation to sustainable development. We're pushing a lot on climate change everywhere now. You can't have true sustainability without safety. Make those alliances, confront the policymakers with the need to change, and again, advocate loudly and proudly at the high-level meeting coming up in New York in July. Get there in force, put us under pressure, and we'll have to change. Speaking, of, speaking specifically about making those connections across different organizations and bridge building, Maxwell, Hang on, Bay. I want to bring you in. You are part of a very successful organization, Restless Development. Um, uh, uh, it's coordinating programs with young people with a view to engage decision makers as well. And although I know your experience specifically is in the sexual and reproductive health rights 
uh, section. But what can we do? What can we learn about best practices for meaningful youth engagement and collaboration with decision makers for your work? I guess what I'm trying to say, Maxwell, in, in fewer words is, once you have a young person in front of you who's receptive, who will listen, who is willing to, to hear you out, how can you get them to, to participate um, in understanding the importance of road safety along with issues like sexual health? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity as well to speak. Um, I think we, as previous speakers have mentioned, we are living in a peak youth generation with a youth bulge, a large number of young people, uh, especially in Africa, 60% of the population are young people. And we've seen that 1.3 million young people are dying every year uh, due to road accident. So I really believe it's high time to really meaningfully engage young people in all decision-making processes that are happening. Um, the first thing I think I will talk about is core creation. Whatever we are going to do needs to involve young people. You know, we are not talking about only core creation in the processes that you are that you are doing in terms of policy formulation, but we need also in terms of core creation in the solutions that are being uh, brought on the table uh, by young people. We also need to take young people as partners. You know, we don't have to take young people uh, uh, just as tokenists, you know, just having young people present, presenting, but we need uh, ownership of young people in all the processes uh, that we are doing. Are young um, people ready to stand up to the challenge? This is a problem that's been perennial. Every nation on earth, I, I'm from Afghanistan, where, where two of my cousins were killed in motorbike accidents growing up. And, and the way that it's spoken about is, is a fait accompli. So how do we, how do young people present a new perspective, Maxwell? How do you make sure that the young people in front of you feel that they have a right? Because no one's going to give you a seat at the table. You must demand it. So how are you in, in engaging young people in, in taking up that place that is rightfully theirs? Yes, you, you find out there's need to, to actually, there have been uh, issues that have been talked about awareness raising. Uh, you know, we need to promote even, uh, to make a deliberate attempt to promote uh, development programs that engages young people as partners, uh, as leaders, in which young people are empowered, uh, while at the same time they are able to access and learn from the experiences and expertise uh, of the adults or, or those uh, uh, before them. Uh, we also need to recognize that young people, people can be both beneficiaries and partners in development actions. So this meaningful youth engagement approach uh, moves a step beyond uh, involving young people, supporting young people as leaders uh, to engage, listen to, collaborate with in achieving effective, uh, effective development what a outcomes. Vital, what a vital message, Maxwell, this idea that young people aren't only the beneficiaries, but actual, uh, you know, they can enact the future that they want to see. And that's that's an idea, thank you, Maxwell, that I'd like to bring to Mohammed Issa, if I may, now that I can pronounce your name properly, I do apologize, how embarrassing for me. Where are you, Mohammed? I'm in Egypt, in Alexandria. <laughs> Good to, good to see you in Egypt. Now, you are the liaison officer for public health issues at the International Federation of Medical Students. You have 1.2 million members worldwide. It's a lot of young people. Now, road safety is a leading public health issue for the, young, for, for, for the youth, um, yet it is very often left out of any agenda. So what is IFMSA doing to promote road safety leadership? And what should agencies and decision makers do to work with you in, in implementing road safety measures? Yes, thank you so much for the question. And uh, you can hear me well, right? Just to make sure, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, in terms of this, we first need to acknowledge the problem, acknowledge that there is a crisis that is existing. And in terms of the items, A, like we recognize the global burden of mortality and morbidity resulting from the road traffic accidents. It's just affecting the health perspectives, affecting the social and economic perspectives, which are, still determinants of health. We are affecting health in one way or another. If it's not to direct death, it's still affecting the social and uh, economic determinants of health. Uh, so in terms of outcomes, we work on empowering the medical students and young healthcare professionals to add this, the road uh, traffic uh, accidents crisis and advocate for concrete changes, to, like effective interventions and local efforts. So it's not just about the global level, it's not just about what IFMC is doing, but also about what the members are doing in their local communities. It's about more of a motto of thinking globally, but acting locally uh, in our own communities that we serve. 
So what we what we're doing in order to promote this mindset and approach to work on the capacity development of our members in terms of knowledge, skills, competencies, to further enhance their ability to meaningfully engage in this uh, in the work on uh, road traffic accidents. It's so Mohammed, let me ask you let me let me ask you one final question before I come to everyone else in this um in this third section. Let me come to you first. When you stand in front of a young doctor who for the next 40, 50 years will be practicing medicine and hopefully saving lives, do you think that the message as it's being presented today is compelling enough and reaching enough young doctors in order for them to be able to make decisions that are as much about public health as they are about medicine? I would say from my own perspective, it's never enough. And that's why accidents are still ha happening things are the crisis is still there so we always need to empower more we always need to further develop our capacity we further need to work with not just our younger generation but even the older generation because like it's never enough we always need to do more we always need to save more so. thank you mohammed uh, isa maxwell Changombe, if i may come to you I'm, I'm supposed to ask you if you've got one final message but uh i feel like you you gave a quite an important um um sort of point of engagement I'm going to ask you a different question why is this important to you um for me personally um I believe young people most often we are often you know sidelined uh, in development processes that are happening and uh these processes they in turn backfires to us they come back to us count us as young people so I think it's really a, a high time that all partners they really listen to uh, take uh, um, uh, views, uh, voices of young people to the table, you know, be accountable to young people. So I really feel that it's a great opportunity to make sure every young person, they are involved in all the processes that are happening in terms of policy form, uh, formulation uh, or on road safety. Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, uh, Maxwell. Matthew, if I may come to you for the final remarks. You've heard a lot about meaningful youth engagement. Sometimes I can hear that and it just sort of goes right by me. What does it mean and how do you, as a policymaker, seek it out? Well, I think the, the lesson I take is from the COVID um, period uh, where, you know, we took on globally action at all levels of society, young and old, um, everywhere, to address this huge crisis. And we fought it, even if it cost us dearly economically because it was unacceptable to deal with this level of casualties. Let's bottle that. And my message to young people today is to do what you're saying, saying in this seminar. Be determined, be strategic, keep pushing, and don't take no for an answer. It is not possible that we continue to accept the current level of casualties, particularly in the global south, of young people on our roads. Don't take no for an answer, please. Thank you so much. Matthew Baldwin there. Uh, unfortunately, due to technical reasons, um, Robert was unable to join us, but he made himself clear uh, in the first and second um, part of this discussion. So thank you to him. Thank you to all of our contributors, including the ones that have been writing in. Uh, uh, Gashinu, who has been watching this live stream, says, I see some great minds that an African government can tap into, that the African government can tap into, excuse me, to achieve safer roads. Um, and um, Mwingi is in Nairobi, Kenya. We've got another one. Margaret says, great to see young people so passionate for road safety. Congratulations, Linda, on Oliver and all other youth leaders. Perpetua says, I, sh I support Simon. Uh, more young people should be involved in decision making regarding the issue of road safety. And Sheila very finally says, yes, we are here. We are experienced experts in road safety. Youth, get in touch with us. Linda, Oliver, let's work together to implement meaningful change urgently. And uh, Sheila is in Kampala. That is mostly all that we have for you for today. We are so grateful for the time that you have given us and for being able to listen to the messages of both young people and the leaders and policymakers in this field. We are coming to the end of this event, but in summary, there's only one thing I can say. This is in our hands and we are dealing with it. The question is, how much more can we give to the cause of road safety, the number one killer of young people worldwide? 
in order to achieve our goals sooner. I am energized as ever, as, as I was last year, sharing this space with you to know that such intelligent young people, such committed and passionate young people, and also policymakers are here sharing this space and listening to one another. Now the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety will sum up today's discussion into a set of recommendations and commitments that will be presented to the AU and EU leaders later this week. This will be published so, uh, too, so you can see what's going on. Uh, please log on to www.claimingourspace.org. Now, as ever, we count on you to play your part, help make these recommendations a reality. Please do share what has been discussed here today and follow us on our activities this week. I want to thank you so much um, for watching. I want to thank our speakers today and to, to the production team, as well as Stefania and Flo, who have been helping me host this event for you. Thank you to the audience and everyone. And don't forget to keep claiming your space. All from me. Goodbye. <laughs>